When it comes to college, we often see the good, the wonderful moments when all of our nights of labor pay off. But what about what happens next? When we're expected to pack away our entire lives before and start in a place where we're expected to excel and prepare ourselves for the professional world. While for some, the move may be a 15 minute tea ride away, others fly 7,000 miles expected to live in a place they've never been to before. Many of my peers share this experience with me. Moving can be isolating and confusing, especially when our loved ones are so far away from where we're building our new lives. And it's so easy to feel like you're alone. In an effort to understand this new forefront and to preserve elements from home, I interviewed my peers who also experienced this big okay, move. Okay, I just clicked okay. the button. Awesome. I interviewed Anne-Marie Hashimoto, who goes to MIT in Boston, Massachusetts. Claire Ozeki, who goes to Georgetown in Washington, D.C. Hannah Freeman, who goes to NYU Stern School of Business in New York. Jason Che, who goes to USC in Southern California. And Kai Hyoto, who goes to Rice in Houston, Texas. Whilst we're all different people, are from different families, and are attending different colleges in different states, we all share one commonality. This is our first time living alone in the U.S. This is the big move. We all had similar yet distinct moves, prompting discussions on the adjustment process for each of us. The past few months, I definitely say that adjusting to, I guess, like a new college life. I'm sure everyone goes through it, but it's it was a bit stressful at the beginning. I'd say the first two months were kind of really hard, but I think I was really lucky and I found like the people who I'm closest to through my orientation program. So. I kind of had like a group of people from the beginning of the semester. That was really helpful. In terms of classes, um, they were very difficult for me. Um, yeah, so first semester we were on pass no record, thank God, or else I'd be having like a solid 2.9 GPA right now. But I think it feels kind of low-key, like really liberating to not have like the pressure of having to like succeed and there's so many like bright and insanely cracked and amazing people around and they just help like support you and I think the biggest thing that I noticed was that people are like really kind here in college compared to like high school and everyone's just willing to help out like it doesn't matter if we're like different grades or anything like upperclassmen and stuff like they'll help out and overall I'd say it was really stressful um, when it got bad, it got really bad, but there were definitely like really, really great moments as well. So overall, I think it was like a really positive experience. I guess moving here for college was the first time I've ever really moved. I've never like even moved houses before. Um, I always lived in the same house for 18 years. Because it was such a like big move, I didn't really focus much on designing my room it was a lot more like living a practical life so even to this day like I have a cork board and like you can probably see that's my roommate's cork board um and there's like a bunch of posters and stuff like that for some reason I still just don't have much design I like helped put up LEDs but that's about it um so yeah just like that's kind of the start of my living, I guess. The semester was interesting for sure because uh, I was kind of scared that maybe I'm making friends would be a little difficult. Um, also because it's been a very long time since I like jumped into a new environment to make friends. Um, but it worked out. Uh, something I'm really like happy about is that my friend group is my dorm floor. Mm -hmm. Um, so like many other people in at USC, they have like, they all have friend groups, but they all live in different dorms because they find each other at like parties in like the first two weeks, like the welcome week parties and things like that. Um, but my main friends are here, so if we want to do something, we just knock on each other's door. So like, we we make some really impulsive decisions sometimes. We're just like, it's 11.30 at night. And we're like, you want to play football? 
and we just like go out and play football um which is really fun uh but yeah that's that's my friend's situation i don't really go to parties here even though it's a party school and like a lot of people ask ask me like even the underclassmen at asij now who are applying to usc they're like how much of a party school is it the thing is like it's more of a choice thing at usc it's like if you want to party there are parties for you to go definitely and there are a lot of party people for you to interact with but if you're not a party person you don't have to go and there are plenty of people that also don't party and they're all cool people as well so i feel like that's kind of a misconception of usc is that everybody likes to party transition wise um i think it was pretty smooth for me and i think it's also because like bryce kind of structures it that way so that it wouldn't be too rough on the students um so basically what happens if you're a freshman at rice is you go through you come to campus and from the first day you have this thing called a week um it's like orientation week a week and for like a week <clears throat> basically like every single hour is like a scheduled like event or some sort of um presentation or some sort of like residential college themed event and because of that like you get no free time but at the same time you get like structured time to like really bond with people um and like you get an a week family like it's kind of i don't know i think a lot of people outside of my college think it's like kind of weird but it's like you're paired with nine other freshmen so you have like 10 a week kids and then for my college it's like three um oh no four a week parents so like and like we call them like our dads and our moms and our siblings um it's kind of quirky like that but because of that like you kind of already have like an established network to begin with and for me like that really helped because like from the beginning I felt like there was like um like an open community of people I can talk to um people in my residential college are like super nice they're willing to talk um I think I made a lot of friends through my residential college and like I think that helped me just like not even think about leaving home and like the concept of like kind of progressing into the next phase of my life for like a pretty long time and I just like had fun um enjoying all the new things that come with the college experience so I think like the transition in the beginning was really nice um some criticism or like not criticism like I talked to someone else and they had like a completely different experience they were like um a week is really artificial like you get placed into a family with like such random people it's just like artificial like they're just trying to bunch up people together um and they said like how that can be like harmful and things, which I thought was like an interesting perspective. But um, I thought it was fun. And I found the fact that I didn't have to think as much about my transition, like a good thing. And I think for a lot of people, like it can be really busy in the freshman, like first semester. And because of that, you don't really think about, or like you don't really reflect on how your life has changed thus far. But, um I would say like after winter break and coming back I think I've started to internalize it a bit more um reflect a bit more about my life and also like how my life has changed through the past few months coming to the U.S. coming to college with all of that and I don't know I think in the beginning, I didn't really miss my family. I didn't really, like, I, like, miss my friends, but I didn't really miss my family. I didn't really miss, like, home. I didn't really miss Japan. But now, I think, I don't, like, miss it, miss it, but I see, like, value in Japan and, like, home. And, like, I think in the beginning, I was really, like, oh, I'm in the U.S. now. Like, I don't want to leave here. There's so many opportunities. It's so cool. But now I'm like, there's so many opportunities. It's cool, but I know I know I know I need to make time in these four years. Like, definitely touch base with home and like my family and going back. So, I know, it's 
Yeah, I don't think it's been that bad, but a lot of things to think about. Uh, I don't know. I feel like it wasn't as big of a transition as I thought. It's because like I've been to the U.S. a lot and like my dad's from here. And it's like my first time in D.C., but it's still like an area that I guess isn't that different from like other areas in the U.S. I visited. So it hasn't been that big of a transition. I'd say it's just more like being away from home and like a different culture is a bit like it took some adjusting. I don't know. I feel like there's just a lot of things about like living in Japan that I took for like granted or I just thought was like the norm and it hasn't been like that here. I guess it's more sort of like um, just the way you, like you interact with people, I guess. Um, I can't really think of a good example right now. It's just like small things, I guess, like when I would like go out with my friends at night, it's like I can walk back alone at like 2 a.m. and it wasn't a big deal or something like that. People are just like a lot more cautious here, I think, about like simple things like that or even just like what they say, which is kind of different from what I expected. I think it was especially super rough for me because like, like even in middle school and like elementary school, when we'd go on like two day like school field trips, I would get so homesick, like start crying because I was so attached to my family, like especially like my mom and my dad and like my siblings, right? And so like, I remember like a week before going, like moving to New York, I was so like, just like depressed about it. And then the last night, like before we did the move, it was like my entire family, we went to this restaurant together. And then we were all sitting around this like round table, like eating or like basically last dinner together. And then it was just so like intense, like in that moment, like, I don't know, I think there's something about knowing that you're going to be away from the people that you love so much so soon that makes you like realize how, I guess like for me, I realized how like the parts like how much I didn't I guess realize how much I loved them because then it's like I don't know because I remember my older sister like bought us like a cake or bought me a cake or like planned out like having them bring my cake I think I told you this before and then like when that happened I don't know it was just like a small like act of kindness but then the thought of her thinking about me and like wanting to do that for me like I don't know, I think it was that in combination with leaving soon, like feeling sentimental that made me so like emotional about it. And I was like, wow, I actually love you so much. And then it made me feel like, I don't know, I would I wouldn't be able to like make that, like build those relationships like moving away. You know what I mean? It's like when you move away, you need to like basically start from scratch. Like you have nothing there. You need to like build your entire life from the bottom up when like at home like you have so many connections already you have so many memories already like it feels much safer so then like I guess yeah so then fast forward like I moved in like the first few nights were like like the hardest like few nights of like my entire life I think I literally couldn't fall asleep like I think I got like like a hundred times more attached to my parents than before and then I guess I had like a lot of self-doubt as like how am I going like I think it is because like I got really lucky in high school like having such strong like genuine relationships it's like in my head I was like there's no way that's going to happen to me again kind of thing and it was super daunting because I was like wow the next four years I'm going to be here like it, it just feels super super alone I think especially being in the city because like there are a lot of similarities in New York to Tokyo right and so then some things here do like remind me I guess of Tokyo. like it doesn't feel I think it's weird because it's like it doesn't it, it feels so different but then it also like isn't completely different at the same time you know so then I guess it just reminded me a lot of like my life in Tokyo kind of thing. But then I had nothing here versus I had like a lot more like from Tokyo. So that was the for that. But yeah, yes, I don't know. That's such a long story. That was the first few weeks, I guess. Transition. It's so rough. Yeah, no, it was 
yeah was, like it hit both of us at different times you know yeah yeah oh my god I remember you were so like wait that's another thing like I kept almost comparing like my transition process to like you guys it's like you I think initially were super like you didn't really get too homesick like initially I remember you were super scared before but then once you moved in you were like kind of fine like you're making friends you're basically living life it's not like you're like super happy or anything but you were like living it pretty well and then I think for me I just like kept getting so anxious of the fact that I wasn't feeling like I guess good or just like complacent there like I was so like I guess I don't know it it felt like the feeling I had of like the anxiousness of moving like wouldn't go away because like I've never felt that stressed for so long you know what I mean? It's like when the stress just and anxiety doesn't go away, it's like it feels like it's going to go on forever, especially seeing like my friends like be like, oh, it's not that bad kind of thing. Like it's like it just it's again like that feeling like alone, extra alone. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. But it did hit us at different times because I remember yeah. when you were fine. It hit me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it hit you like a bit after, which also, yeah, I wonder why. I think it's because for me, it's not necessarily like it's not like some like something bad happened that triggered it. It's more just like me being anxious about being like not being like me being anxious about something that hasn't really happened, but like about just being nervous that I wouldn't like enjoy it kind of thing. Like speculating too much into the future, being like, wait, I'm gonna be so depressed here for four more years. Like, what am I gonna do? Kind of thing. Yeah yeah and I feel like for me it was like something triggered it so then I think that's how yeah it's also different for both of us because we were yeah. like but I was like really grateful because I had you for support and I feel like honestly if I didn't have you I wouldn't know what to do yeah same wait yeah genuinely same I literally I don't know it was so rough I think it also has to do with me being such a creature of habit like I'm such like I like comfort and I like consistency I just like stability and especially going to ASIJ where like I think another like I guess impact of ASIJ being so clicky was that it made us kind of like not used to change I guess because we're with stuck with the same people like same group of friends like all throughout high school so then it's like we're not used to like I don't know getting having like a complete restart like starting from scratch kind of thing. so yeah and that way I feel like it but I don't know I don't know how much different it would have been if we came from like a bigger school though but I don't know it was a I think you're right because ASIJ like it like pushed all of us in that same little like box yeah and so, yeah. yeah no I didn't even think of that before but you're right I think ASIJ Mm -hmm. itself may have made it harder for us. Subsequently, we delved into culture differences and our shared experiences from our lives in Japan. Culture is definitely different. Uh, I think I, I really do like being here at USC, but I miss a lot of things in Japan in terms of like, I think here you can be it might be a little more freeing in a way. And there are a lot of like random things that you can do, which I find fun. Like just sitting with friends and coming up with random stuff and we can just do it, which I couldn't really do when I was in Japan. But in Japan, it's just like not as scary. (laughs) Like... The U.S., especially the public transport, like I was on public transport yesterday uh, with my friends and there are some odd people. There are some scary people. Somebody's always shouting. Um, And like, I always joke that in Japan, the loudest thing on the train is the train. But in the U.S., the loudest thing on the train is some random pair of people like shouting at each other. Um... I miss convenience stores because I get hungry at night a lot. <laughs> but everything is so expensive here. 
especially because of the exchange rate as well. But in general, everything just costs more here, which kind of sucks. So I, I always try my best to like hold myself back from like ordering food, which is even more expensive because of like delivery fees and things like that. Um, uh, like first semester, I brought some like Japanese snacks just a little bit. And I was like, yeah, it, I ate all of it at the end of it. Um, and I was like, it's really good. And I gave some of it to my friends and they're like, oh, wow, this is really good. And I'm just like, you know what, next semester, as in this semester, I'm going to bring back a bunch. So like I filled like a whole suitcase with like Japanese snacks and like instant noodles and things like that. So I think that's like one thing that I did different when I came back for second semester. So now I just have like Japanese snacks all over the place. I did the uh, same thing. Yeah. Like exactly. I brought like two little like bags and then everyone ate them all and it was like gone within the first like week of me being here. So yeah, I stocked up and it's still it's like running low already. Yeah. I like have it in like a in a suitcase with like a lock cuz somebody on this dorm has a food stealing problem. So I'm just, I'm just like lock it. And all, that also kind of stops me from eating all of it because, like, there's there's kind of a hassle of taking it out and opening it every time. Do you definitely feel like, um, I feel like college, because you have to choose your own classes more and, like, there's more liberty with the classes you take with, like, a lot of schools, it's, it's also liberating, but also at times, like, you realize, like, you kind of fit into like a certain trope so for instance there's people who are like all like one subject and then they kind of like fit that like subject trope or like there's people like me who are like still taking like different subjects and I feel like those people fit like the still curious about different subjects don't know exactly what they want to do kind of trope so I feel like I don't know I've just noticed that recently and haven't really thought of like what I feel about it but that like I feel like whenever you introduce yourself to like someone it's like hi my name is Kai and it's like either like your major or your like interest like your future aspirations and it's like I, am I in like am I like limiting myself by labeling myself that way but I don't know it's, it's interesting now like people can associate you with like one particular thing and that's like what they take out of it I think, like, for me, um, I don't know, like, I, I am pre-med, but I don't think about it that much. Um, I think it's, like, more just, like, the things that I do naturally tend to follow the lines of, like, what someone interested in the healthcare would do. But, like, some of my friends would be, like, oh, like, you know, like, in whatever many years you're going to be in residency, like, you're going to have no free time, blah, 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 blah. And I'm, like, Yeah. <laughs> But that's not me now. We we can talk about something else. Um, but it's but it's interesting how people do that. Yeah, it's always so many people are very like future focused. Yeah, because like, uh, I'm gonna. I, be I mean, other than like the minor, like minor, minor, like I guess reference, like you know how we were talking about people here say something something is crazy, like those like minor, like I guess speech differences kind of thing. I think, like, initially, like, especially first semester, I was like, wow, like, coming to New York, I can appreciate Japan so much more, right? Like, I just miss it a lot. I just kept comparing it, I guess. But then I think this semester, or it's like going back to Japan over winter break. I realized, like, I obviously, like, love it so much. And I'm so glad that I grew up in Japan. But then I think... Like, being in Japan over winter break, it did make me, like, super grateful that I was able to, like, I don't know, I guess broaden my perspective in life. Because, like, living in Japan all year, it's, like, very, like, secluding. It's, like, like you know, it's own, like, island country kind of thing. Like, there's not, there is, like, a whole other world out there. And it's, I think it is just partly coming, like, I mean, I'm sure, like, if I went to, like, a university in Japan, that would also be like 
I go into the university and I meet like so many new people. It's also like a new environment, new perspective kind of thing. But like, I think going all the way to New York, like also exploring the city kind of thing, it made me super grateful to like have had the chance to see beyond Japan, like experience like a different culture, I guess. And I don't know, I think, uh, like Japan to me now is so much like, I don't know, it, it's definitely like a past life now. I think I'm gradually like, especially going back to Japan and then coming back here, like again, after winter break, it's like, oh, wow, this is actually like, life here is becoming like my actual life. You know, where it's like, I think everyone like first semester of college, we were all like, oh, this feels like a simulation, or, like it feels like summer camp or something. But then like going back to back home and then coming back here again, like coming back here again for some reason was like, oh wow, okay, this is like slowly merging into like my actual life. And then, so that's why I guess like Japan, my relationship with it is much more in like past kind of thing. And I feel more ready to like, not move on. I would never move on from Japan, but just like be more open-minded to like my new environment here. And like not be so like, oh, like this, like Japan is so much better. Blah, blah, blah. Like to actually appreciate my life here, but then like still be able to call, you know, Japan home, I guess. So, I don't know. So much of like locations, I guess, are about the people who, like the connections that you have then, like the people not so much the place. So it's definitely like, obviously my family is there. Like Japan is where like all of us like friends come back to. And so that's what makes it important to me. Yeah. Oh, and also because I feel like so few people are from Japan and New York that like Japan is like a big part of my identity here, I guess. Like I'm known as the girl from Tokyo. And it makes me more like, proud of it like in Japan it's not cool to be from Japan but here it's so cool to be from Japan so I definitely own it a lot more same here things that I like kind of like miss about Japan are just like the food and the transportation but otherwise I feel like not many things have changed to be honest like in terms of like it changed so that it got bad I feel like things actually got like better because I feel like people are much more open and like social and friendly here than back in Japan um, I think, like, it wasn't in the hard, I think, like, the biggest adjustment, like, crisis that I was having was it in terms of, like, the culture shift, because, like, like, we grew up speaking, like, English, and, like, knowing, quote, in quotes, knowing, like, U.S. culture, and, like, we kind of know, like, how, like, things work around here, ish, and, Loki, it's not that different to what I expected, but, I think the adjustment, it's just, uh, I don't know, like, living on your own. Well, I think I was pretty independent as a kid, because, but, so it wasn't that bad living myself, like, I don't think I got, like, homesick or anything, and Loki, I'm, like, glad to be able to, like, live by myself, but I think the biggest adjustment was, like, the classes, it was all, like, academic-wise and, like, social-wise, I feel like. Like, the adjustment of, like, learning how to small talk and, like, make friends from ground zero because we went to the same school for, like, 10 years, so, like, we never really had to do that. I don't know. It's not something I think about a lot, I feel like. It's not like I'm, like, constantly missing home. It's more, like, when other people are going home and stuff for, like, breaks and stuff, that's when I, like, really miss home. It depends on the type of people you surround yourself with, and I feel like I found, like, like good people that, are just like I mean not just like my high school friends in terms of like like their personality but more just like the type of people they are like their values which I feel like hasn't it feels like there hasn't been that big of a difference I guess it's more just like things that I thought everyone would sort of have the same background on they don't really like it's just small things but like we had like a mochi making event the other day for our Japan club but like none of my friends knew what mochi was or they thought it was like ice cream um and so it's just like interesting. This process involves a profound self-discovery, and we explored some of our personal and professional pursuits in this new environment. I guess in terms of like more bigger things, um, I guess I 
I had been working on like rocket team, so I have been able to contribute to like our large competition rocket that I think could be launched in June. I'm gonna take like a moment to hiatus because uh, I'm gonna get off class network for this semester, so I'm taking a little break, but that's been really fun. Um, Win Ensemble at the Trumpet, that's been a bit really fun too, because I got to meet like a lot of other classes, and there's really sweet and it's great that I get to be music in college. Um, I'd say like, just in general, uh, everything outside of the classes have been pretty fun, because the lectures can be a kind of a slog to go through. Um, but yeah, the highlights are, it's not really like one standalone thing, it's more like just the small things and like interactions you have with like your friends like every day, but just like coming back from like a whole day of classes and eating dinner with like your group of friends that you haven't seen like all day and spending the night with them studying, I think that's like one of the most look forward to events like every day so yeah kind of the kanji but small things you know yeah. i've been looking into like um narratives and like narratives in healthcare um and like i'm like like starting this research opportunity with like narratives in healthcare with like pediatric patients so, like it's interesting that you bring like that kind of i don't know that same like idea because that's what's been on my mind too recently so. that's so cool what are you thinking of doing with that um okay so it's basically like there's this already um like set structured um narrative medicine for veterans um and for like especially for veterans like they they have like a risk for like ptsd or like some sort of um like mental illness or like they might just have like general um you know like hard experiences from the war so like they developed this program um to help veterans and to also like have medical students and people in like medicine be able to better like connect to patients and better understand their story and like that we're trying to implement into pediatrics um and see like if that helps with like pediatric patients and like because like pediatrics we probably have to work more with like their families but um yeah, it's going to start probably soon. I'm excited. Recognizing the inherent challenges, we discussed the hardships and investigations we encountered during our initial months in college. Yeah, I definitely felt like I was losing, like, a part of myself being here, almost. And I think, but I think it just goes back to, like, the people, like, if you don't feel fully comfortable around the people that you're with, then you're never going to feel, like, fully yourself, kind of thing. But I think that's a gradual thing you kind of develop. And I do think like people definitely change being in such a completely different environment with like all new people. But then it's like you'll build a life here and like build your like go back. Like for some reason coming here, like being around the people that I'm with, I realized how much of like a people pleaser I can remember. And I think that's because like in ASA, I feel like everyone's like was super like nicey nice of like they wanted oh, to maintain their space so they always look like were like super agreeable right, I don't know did you think that yeah, yeah I feel like I'm also a people pleaser like my greatest mm -hmm. like I realized my greatest fear is like not being liked which is so stupid because mm -hmm. like I'm not gonna be liked by everyone that's just not gonna happen yeah but yeah but then coming here or maybe it's like um so I still like keep in touch with the SIJ people. Um yeah, because I miss everybody. Yeah. yeah. There was like a I don't know, I think maybe it's like a culture thing. Cause there are just things that people won't get that are from here. Mm. Yeah. Um I think I feel like people here are so much more open i guess like coming to college everybody's especially in the first weeks everybody's on the same boat trying to get to know people so like well my, one thing about me was like i still had that japanese mentality of like i don't just like throw myself out there you know i kind of like try to seek out what's going on and then go somewhere with that but like american people are just like they just go hi they have like a first catch like a catchphrase like their first line they're just like oh yeah hi my name is this and that this and that like how are you and i think the first weeks that kind of it, it, it gave me a lot of social anxiety for some reason i didn't i didn't think i was a person with that much social anxiety but i wasn't ready for so many people just 
start talking to me and me to be unprepared with what I was going to say. So that's also like kind of a culture shock I think that happened when I got here. Yeah. Hmm? And it doesn't make you less special, but in a way it kind of does. Like you find people that are like you. So you don't stand out as much as you do in high school, I feel like. If that makes sense. I don't know. I think it's it's an interesting experience. I think every college yeah, college is weird. <laughs> it's different for everyone, right? Because I feel like you yourself were super like you were very unique in high school where there weren't a lot of guys that like were as interested in like biology but also theater. And I think it was like a unique combination of who you are. And I think, yeah. you know, there are people who are like more multifaceted at college. They and you know, um and I think it's also like important not to discount yourself. Um I think like it wasn't in the hard I think like the biggest adjustment like crisis that I was having was it in terms of like the culture shift because like like we grew up speaking like English and like knowing quote in quotes knowing like U.S. culture and like we kind of know like how like things work around here ish and Loki it's not that different to what I expected but mm, I think adjustment it's just uh I don't know like living on your own well I think I was pretty independent as a kid because but so it wasn't that bad living myself like I don't think I got like homesick or anything and Loki I'm like glad to be able to like live by myself but I think the biggest adjustment was like the classes it was all like academic wise and like social wise I feel like like the adjustment of like learning how to small talk and like make friends from ground zero because we went to the same school for like 10 years so like we never really had to do that yeah and you have to like put effort into being extroverted and trying to create new relationships which I feel like at the beginning was kind of really stressful to do like I was forcing myself but I feel like now it comes more natural after like five months of stressing about it but definitely at the beginning it was really hard um, but now I'd say that I'm way more extroverted compared to myself in high school. Like, yeah. Uh, it's like such a, like, as shit as the college app process was, like, I matured like four years in that span. Like, I don't know, like, I don't know, like 20 years. Like, going through that, like, it, it grows you up so much. Yeah. Like, your personal growth that you actually care about and stop, like, kissing ass and just, I don't know, like, living. I think that's low-key the biggest transition. We also discussed the perspectives and insights gained from our experiences attending college in the U.S. Wait, I think it really has to do with me being so close to someone that's completely different from me, like, actually so completely different from me. Like, the way that we talk, the way that we interact, like, the way that we make friends or, like, how we see people and how we feel are, like, totally different. And then I think because she... I think like being around someone that's so different from me makes me learn more about myself because it makes me reflect like, oh, she's doing like whatever, whatever, like, and I'm like, wait, I would never think like that. And it makes me think back like how I would have act kind of thing. And like, I don't know, it did, I don't know, the people pleasing thing just comes into my mind a lot just because like everyone here is always like, oh my gosh, like you're too nice sometimes, like in like a negative, more negative way, like you need to kind of stand your ground kind of thing yeah and then yeah and so then I don't know and then I think it's hard to find that balance between like standing your ground and like being a bit more firm versus like when do you like balance that out with like trying to like actually keep the peace for your own like mental like you know whatever thing and it's like sometimes it's just not worth the hassle of being I don't know yeah but I think basically I think my main point is that like in ASIJ I was friends with people who are super similar to me in terms of like what we value like how we talk and all that and then coming here being with being friends with some people who are like extremely different from me just made me reflect more on myself 
in like how what kind of person that I want to be kind of thing and I'm still trying to figure that out honestly but yeah I guess that's yeah and I don't know if it's like a business student thing but like people here are very like straightforward or just like you know they won't really sugarcoat things sometimes and I think a lot about being in business school and specifically is that like you just interact with so many different types of people in like professional environments and just like social environments and so like like finding the balance between like being like adaptable but also like like maintaining like individuality or like not individual but maintaining like your actual like genuine identity and like the way that you talk and like staying genuine but then also like you know learning to adapt to people and like communicate with them how they would best respond it's like also something I've had to learn yeah that's so cool and I think that like that's what's like so positive about college because I feel like you learn mm-hmm. to deal with people who like you wouldn't deal with otherwise like I remember yeah like, like, I remember, I was like, why, these people are so, Im- I was thinking, why are they so immature? Why are they so, thin? Mm-hmm. why are they so, like, upfront? But it's like, mm-hmm. people in the world will be like that. Like, people aren't the same. Yeah. Like, people aren't going to be, like, the copies that they were in high school. So we, like, yeah. we have this cool opportunity where we get to, like, learn more about the world without, like, technically being in, like, the real world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wait, that's, but that's enough. But I think person Mm -hmm. I think it's business like people literally start recruiting for their jobs like next semester basically if they're going into like investment banking so it very much already feels like super real world like NYU already like before coming here like people would be like oh you're gonna like have to grow up so much faster because it's like in the city there's no like there's not really like that safety net of like a secure campus and I guess it just makes it a more like drastic change from high school in that sense how for us we have to interact like so much with the upperclassmen as well because they're basically like going into like fields that we will soon like go in like they're basically experiencing it versus like our professors they're like less attached to what we are trying to pursue you know what I mean because they're just like teaching us like I don't know random things it's definitely more like experience based and so that's why like people look up to or like have the upper class and more as their role models but then that's created like that's made forced all like the freshmen to like put all the upper class on such a pedestal that there's like massive like power dynamics here I think and then like it makes you like crave or like want the upper class to like really like you and then it makes you like act in ways that like will have that like it's just a weird like weird thing and it's definitely like made me feel like a lot of my relationships just feel super transactional with the upper class and sometimes which I don't know and then it's like oh am I actually being myself or am I being like someone I like I know they want me to be so that I can just like be like you know like establish like super close friendships relationships with them so one of my friends he's like he used to try and learn Japanese mm-hmm. and the thing is like he kind of stopped learning about Japanese culture but then like ever since I came into his life um I've been like tell like teaching him Japanese things and like giving him Japanese food and like like recently he's he's been going on Amazon like buying things that I I fed him because he's like I want more of it so that's that's kind of fun to see that just some random person is like interested in and or wanting to see more of the culture that you grew up with that isn't here that's one thing that that's nice I think um I don't think I have like I have like kind of imposter syndrome like I'd say that imposter syndrome is definitely real no I, I take it back like imposter syndrome is quite real um it's not like i feel like the people that i'm close with they're like really insane like one of my friends he's well actually like all of my friends are like insanely cracked 
um like I have a friend who is trying to take like I don't know like quantum physics two or something next semester because he skipped out of like the first four physics classes and I was struggling and dying in the intro physics and my one of my other friends he's also takes the same classes as me ironically but he can just like sit there in one lecture and just consume information and not study and he can just like understand everything he got a flat out hundred on the final and i was just like oh my god and i guess everyone is always like skipping classes taking advanced classes and here i am struggling to get through my like mandatory like gen ed courses that i need to take to graduate so it's just like damn i'm in a completely different world like i have uh another friend who he like basically creates like astronomy videos for like fun and he has like so many followers and like on the internet he's like a like a kind of like a small internet celebrity and just in general everyone is just like hella cracked and insane and i'm just like here being like ooh, and sometimes i guess i feel like i am leeching off of everyone and just being like oh i need help with this piece set can you help me and then i kind of feel bad but i don't think that like i'm the only person going through this but sometimes it does feel like you are the only one in college who just doesn't know what you're really doing i guess like that adjustment is hard especially coming from a place like high school where like low-key everything was on easy mode in terms of classes and i guess like not in the least bradish way possible like going from one of the most academic like strong students to like literally dying i wouldn't say that it's like a taking a big toll off of me but it's definitely been like eye-opening i'd say yeah like i made like really good friends um and like even though we can't like go out like super late or anything like in tokyo it's still like a lot of fun um and yeah i definitely think like transportation is a lot easier in japan like getting around places but like we still like sort of made it work and we tried like a lot of like new restaurants and things like that um like gone to shows and stuff which is like a lot of fun and then just like small things like this semester my friends and i all have like very like small number of classes on monday so we'll like go out to a museum and then get like a cute brunch or something which is a, just a lot of fun which is like something fun that you can do like on a weekday which we didn't do in high school I think that's probably been like the highlight of college so far but it's like I found like where I've gone especially close to like my roommate and the other people on my floor um so that's been a lot of fun like we've gotten really close which has definitely been nice like especially when school gets stressful it's just good to have that sort of like support yeah departing from japan prompted us to contemplate aspects of our home country that we hadn't previously considered offering commentary on the environment in which we grew up there's so many things about japan that like limit your perspective i guess like there's so many like you know like i think japan they think everything is a taboo or like they just have so many like culture like super like like cultural norms that they like force onto everyone because they want like community you know like what I mean like they want like community like I expected it coming here so I can't say it was too much of a shock because I expected it but I guess it's the difference between Japanese culture and American culture is that like the U.S. individualism is really like encouraged but in japan it's more about you sitting in a society if that makes sense like in japan like i'm part like i my identity is defined by being a, a part of this group of people in tokyo or at ASA or whatever but here it's like you're supposed to define yourself as being you and just you and you're just like moving whatever environments, but you're still yourself.
kind of thing. And a lot of people are like that, which in a way I like. Sometimes I think it can lead to a lot of like arrogance and some people can be a little annoying, but I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it makes people more interesting. I always like, I, I like to tell like my friends and also like my girlfriend who's who asks about um, college stuff. But I think I really miss Japan, but I think Japan is a nicer place to live, but America is a place where you can build a lot of personality, especially because you kind of need it, especially here, because like the surrounding neighborhood is not necessarily a really safe neighborhood. Um, so like you can't really at night, you can't just like roam around and take a walk at night outside of campus. You kind of have to like have a purpose or else like people out there will know that you you're just like kind of roaming about. And that's family discussions ensued, including considerations about the prospect of leaving them behind. You often like don't forget where you came from because it, it's always there, right? Yeah. But it's like, I don't know. I, I remember thinking like we just we can't just like take a 20 minute car ride and go home, you know? And a mm, lot of my friends. Yeah. Do. Yeah. So it's like I think we have a like, I don't know if you felt this, but I had this mentality that I can't screw up because they're so far from me. Like I can't do anything to like make them worried, you know? Mm. And I think they're it's it's an it's kind of like you want to do right by the people that sent you off and provided you with so many opportunities but you also want to go back to them it just sometimes like occur in your head like i wonder if there's anything bad that could happen to my family right now that i wouldn't know about um and like also i think something that's typical with like asian households i don't want to generalize too much but like I guess with like family in general, like you don't like parents don't want to make their children worried. And because of that, like they won't tell you if something bad happens. I think for parents, it's like they wouldn't want us to be worried. They just want us to have fun in this unique time, like transitioning from childhood to adulthood. And I get that, but also I I understand like how you would worry as well, because I would worry like that. They don't want to burden their children but at the same time like we're not really children anymore and i feel like we want to we can be help to them as much as they've been to us i don't think it's changed my personality it might have changed like my hmm, my views on certain things maybe um like i guess living alone lo alone um made me i guess respect what my parents have done for me as a kid more um or i don't know certain issues that people like that arise here as a college student that i never really had to think about like before college makes me want to like help my friends who have those problems or anything like that because I guess this situate this like environment of living together I see them all as like not family but like they're all my roommates and we're all in the same boat so I'm just like might as well help each other like there's no point trying to get through yourself and watching other people in your on your floor like want to die so Finally, my peers shared valuable insights and words of wisdom for anyone embarking on such a personal journey. I'd say spend your time in high school finding something that you actually like to do. And I think doing that will allow you to find like a coping mechanism in college or like a group of friends who like the same thing or like a club. And I think that's been really helpful. Like I continue music and they keep my sanity. Um, yeah, find something that you like to do and also learn to live for yourself in high school. Um, I guess like, oh, also just like establish healthy habits.
it has to go like sleep properly but oh. it's just academic related it's like everything is life related like learn how to not compare to yourself to others in high school because if you do that in college like you're gonna die like it, it, like you have a, like 900 other people or a thousand other people so learn how to not compare yourself with others um learn how to actually have a healthy sleep schedule find something that you like to do um that's like a hobby that's like even just like one thing that you do for yourself and not for others and also work hard work your butt off like work hard but don't die yeah i think people say like oh just have fun and enjoy life in high school but i'd say work hard because like one day you're gonna you are gonna have to work hard so learn how to work hard but also find something that you like to do what for like an underclassman let's say is that for the greater world who knows Uh, okay um Huh. I don't know what what is something I could say that that would round up. I think <laughs> when you're at college, try to oh, you know what? When you're at college, everybody, especially in the beginning, everybody's doing and thinking about the same thing uh, in terms of they want they're trying to get to know where they are who they're with you know like how people might think about you so like i think <clears throat> don't be shy about who you are or where you're in um, or where you're from uh because everybody's going to be from many many different kinds of places when you're at a u.s college um so just try to make friends think learning about things early um as much as you can is always a bigger benefit also don't try too hard to keep in touch with everybody that you meet because like when you're called everybody's going to talk to each other but if you find out that certain people aren't the kinds of people that you want to be with, there are hundreds and hundreds of other people that are out there thinking the same thing that might be a match for you. So like a lot of people that I talk to here, I may not see for the rest of my life because I had this one class with them and they were like nice. Um, or some of them were like really not nice, but the thing about college is you'll run into those people. So don't think too deep about not great people that you run into. But do try your best to stay connected with the people that you like, that you run into, because there's a good chance that you'll end up not living in the same building or not taking the same classes. So trying to keep those connections could be difficult, but if you find the right people, then it'll definitely, definitely be a really big benefit if you can stay in touch with them. I think that was a long words of wisdom. You have a lot of words of wisdom to give. (laughs) What can you say? What can you say? I'd say like, I guess I'd like to, but like one is just, I guess, keep connect, like keep strong connections with people from like home and from high school. Like, I make sure to like call my parents like at least once a week just to like I don't know keep like talking to them and updating them and I try to like I guess keep connections with high school friends which is always nice um especially I feel like the first month of college was kind of hard being away from home it was nice having that like support there people that like know you and like um that you can just sort of turn to and then I'd say like really like branch out to find like good people in college um and I feel like in the beginning, everyone's sort of like very frantic to find friends. So it feels kind of superficial sometimes the connections you make. So it's like, I guess like keep looking for those deep connections of people that like, you know, have like good values because in the end, like, like I've like made friends and I've lost a lot of friends like in the first semester, but it's like, I have like a good group of like people around me now that I can rely on. Okay. I think an advice I have 
and this actually comes like more because of my personality um i'm a bit of like an internal pessimist um i am i am like a pretty harsh critic of myself sometimes and because of that like i kind of bring myself down sometimes um but something that i've realized through transitioning in my college experience is that just telling yourself like verbalizing a little under your breath like it's all going to be okay like really helps in the sense that you just like take a deep breath and you're like it's going to be okay like it'll work out you know like you start to notice things that are like pretty good in your daily life like maybe the weather is nice to like the weather is so nice in houston today where like maybe you had a nice interaction with like one of your friends or you just notice how the trees are so vibrant and like green and the campus is so beautiful or like you notice like how you're surrounded by so many like positive people and I think it's it's hard to be like always optimistic and I don't think it's necessarily good to always be optimistic but if you ever feel like down or you feel like you're struggling I think that one way you can get past it is just like knowing that it'll always like work out and it does get better um over time and I think that naturally would prompt you to like reflect on what has happened and I don't think you have to like think like reflect immediately upon what has happened or like your entire transitioning process in your life I think that um, it's fine in the beginning to just like be just focus on like living and like experiencing everything that's happening around you because it's just like a whirlwind whirlwind of events but afterwards kind of taking the time to you know like reflect a little maybe like journal a little or you can just think about what you've accomplished or what's happened over like the past few months like that definitely helps you like boost your confidence as to like oh like I actually did grow as a person or like oh I actually did have these accomplishments as a person um and I think that like kind of boosts your morale like helps you think like oh maybe college isn't that bad after all like maybe it's not that rough of a transition like I'm doing pretty good so I think that's like some things that I would I don't know advise or I don't know if that's like even advice but like some things you know, that are good to think of um, if you're going through some transition in life. In some ways, like, if that, like, I think for me, especially, like, in some ways that has, like, living in my perspective, since coming here, it could feel, like, super, I don't know. Wait, I need to come, my thoughts. But I guess my advice would be to, like, genuinely have like an open perspective about yourself and also about like the people around you and like how you want to live your life like don't pigeonhole yourself into like the like identity that I guess it's associated yourself with like back at home like when you move you know what I mean and then I feel like that just like limits you in so many different ways and like I don't know at least for me personally I feel like college is such like it's just an environment that like really like pushes you to grow so much more than like I feel like our high school did so I feel like ASIJ was so like everyone was the same like everyone wanted to like stay the same kind of thing and so I feel like that would be one advice I wish like I think growing up in Japan I didn't really like reflect on what I personally like felt like super passionate about I I think I put so much care and like energy into things that like externally like other people around me made me think that like I should value kind of thing and then I feel like I guess I didn't really prioritize myself in that sense versus like so I feel like mm, and I do think that's like a Japanese like cultural thing because I feel like Japanese people are like like discouraged from like speaking out their true thoughts or like 
being like different or like being you know having like a distinct identity kind of thing oh, wait i'm getting confused <laughs> but or or i guess like people in japan like because they want to be so agreeable and they want to be like really similar to like people around them yeah so then yeah it, it does discourage you from like developing your own like distinct identity and so i guess coming here like your transition to like a separate country or like different country or whatever i feel like it is like truly a place or like time to like explore like yourself explore like what you're genuine like what genuinely like brings you peace or like what you're genuinely interested in and kind of like trying your hardest to like isolate yourself from like your environment or like other people's opinions of like what success means or like what happiness means or like what love means kind of thing and like they like trying your best to like figure that out for yourself and like really being like okay I'm like this is my life this is the path that like I want to pursue like I only get one chance at this kind of thing like I want to do something that will genuinely like make me happy and make me feel like I'm fulfilling like of like values and goals that I like that are my own kind of thing um but then I say that and like like there are a lot of things that I do feel that like kind of go again like I'm not practicing what I'm preaching here for sure because I feel like I'm putting so much value into stuff that I don't actually care about you know but I don't know. I feel like that's just like more of a like lifelong like process, I guess. But yeah. It's a lifelong battle. And I think I'm always wondering if I'm doing the right thing for myself mm -hmm. or like or if I'm even like living to my potential in any way. I'm like, oh mm -hmm. I should and I always I would always tell myself, don't dwell on the past, but I always do because I'm like, if mm -hmm. I do this better. And so I think we can practice, I think what we preach is what we wish to practice, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think we're all working towards what we preach. Like, you're too accommodating. You're too nice. Yeah. And I think that is literally a product of where we grew up. Yeah. And it's like, I don't think we'll ever get rid of that because we can't get rid yeah. of where we grew up. And also, like, we're proud of where we grew up. But I think, yeah. I think it's also important to to follow what you just said to like yeah. our own thoughts and to like fight against things that we don't think are fair well yeah I agree and like being agreeable in that sense I feel like is also like a positive quality like you know like having empathy or like just really thinking about how your actions like impact other people I feel like is like a quality we both developed in Japan and it's why like we don't want you know what I mean like we want to keep the peace with people around. I don't know yeah and I think as much as um yeah. I'm sorry as much as there's a strength in individuality there's also mm -hmm. a strength in a strength in like collectivism which Japan has a lot of mm -hmm. yeah I yeah think, like though we want to May make sure that we develop individual develop as individuals there's something so mm -hmm. wonderful about community and about collective. yeah and so I think like in that regard we can't we shouldn't get rid of where we grew up because yeah um, that Japan is so special at um but there's yeah. always a lot wrong with that as well so it's kind yeah. of middle ground between like autonomy and individuality and the community that we grew up in yeah it's like taking parts of like what we learned growing up in Japanese culture like taking parts that we like like actually like you know I guess feel like aligned with our values and then like grow like coming to like the U.S. and like having those values as well you know like and then like blending those together kind of thing like we have the best of both worlds I feel like yes. yeah our experiences are all unique and maybe we'll become distant memories to one another but I'd like to think that our pasts bind us together, and I'm grateful to know these people now, and to know that, at least for now, I'm not alone. <laughs>